tell you what I'd really like to try to set up. All, all right. right. Well, John Hillerman, <laughs> after all these years. After all these years. And we just pick up where we left off in our dressing room. I know, just <laughs> dabbing away. <laughs> <laughs> John, I, I couldn't possibly have envisioned it um, that, you know, these years down the road that we would be sitting talking under these circumstances, but maybe you did envision it. Well, I, it's a small world, you know, in show business. I'm forever running into people that I knew before. It's a small world. It doesn't surprise me that we're sitting here talking like this. Does it surprise you? Not really, I guess. <laughs> it's just that um, uh, it's, it's kind of a dream fulfilled, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. It You're is. doing what you want to do. Yes, very much so. I'm doing yeah. what I want to do. Yes. We both look terribly happy. <laughs> Probably a little smug. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Hillerman line if I ever heard <laughs> one. John, the thing that brings us together today is mm. this a very unusual video that you have. Mm -hmm. So uh, just explain to the audience then what it is. Well, what it's never been done before. It's new. It has its antecedents in a book which was done last year, which where you bought the book and tried to solve the mystery. And the prize was uh, $10,000, I believe. And it was a big success. It was on the bestseller list for like 33 weeks or something. This is a home videotape which you buy, it's in the stores where you would normally buy m movies on videotape, that kind of thing. Uh, it's called Money Hunt, and it's a 40-minute home video cassette which you take home and play. It's really a mystery puzzle, and you try to solve. There are three clues you have to figure out. You try to figure those clues out, call in the number, you have to figure out the phone number, which is the easiest part of all. If you can't figure that out, you might as well forget it. And uh, you call in your answer, and the winner wins $100,000, which is considerably more. And it goes in the stores today, June the 27th, and uh, the players have until September the 11th to guess the answer, or figure out the answer. It's not really guesswork. It's really a game of deductive reasoning. And there's no luck involved. The clues are there for anyone to find. So. It's a, a puzzle, a game, fun to play, hopefully, and somebody wins $100,000. Do you know the answer? No. I don't know the answer. I'm not eligible to play, so I don't want to know the answer. <laughs> Four people know the answer. We have an excerpt that they sent us, John, mm. and in the excerpt, it's the scene where uh, the two women get together uh, and one has a bottle and she takes the contents and pours it into a, a glass. Mm and they go wake up the man, and uh, then, uh, then there's another scene that's a card-playing scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, what, what should people look for? Just uh, Well, when I, uh, the, the, the mystery, is, the little mystery puzzle is a 30-minute thing, which are, is acted out by four actors. I don't act in it, but I, I host the thing. I come on at the beginning of the tape. And in fact, I tell you the three clues that you have to find. So at the very beginning, you know what you're looking for. Then you watch this drama, being a, it's really a tongue-in-cheek thing, it's not, it's not to be taken seriously at all. And you're watching actors read lines and handle props, all of which may or may not be a clue. Obviously, the thing is laden with clues. So you're really, then you have to figure out, deduce which ones give you the answer to the three clues that I've already told you to look for. And then at the end, I come on again. Uh, in the background of the narration are the clues to the phone number, and I hint heavily how to figure that one out. I'm the friend of the viewer. I don't want them to hate me. Supposing four or five or ten people all get it. Then we will have a playoff under controlled conditions, and the first person to win the playoff wins all of the money. We're not, we won't be split up. So there can be only one person getting to win. the hundred thousand. It's worth. It's worth it. And we don't know. Uh, we've never. It's never been done before. So we don't know whether it's reasonably difficult or you know, if everybody's going to win. It's. It's. It'll be interesting to see how many people actually figure out the answer. Uh, I've watched it once, and I certainly couldn't figure it out in one viewing. The thing about the tape that's so great is that it lends itself perfectly to that because I don't think you could figure it out in one viewing. And with the tape, you can play it back and go back to a section and really analyze it. 
to try to figure out the puzzle. What is the deadline? Uh, September the 11th, midnight Eastern Standard Time, to guess the telephone number and call in the answer. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it all turns out. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how it turns out. Now, you'll be going into Magnum in August. You'll start mm -hmm. filming again. The end of August, yes. Honolulu. And it'll be which season? How many? The fifth season. Snap. Number five. Wonderful. It is wonderful. I love doing the show. And uh, I think I've been acting 30 years, as you know. We started out together. And uh, it's, Higgins is the best part I've ever had. I love doing it. I never get tired of it. Uh, Tom is terrific to work with. He's just, uh, in all my years, he's one of the best people I've ever worked with. I, I love working with him. So you're looking at a happy actor. There aren't many of us around. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, as far as getting this role, it seems like through the years of talking with actors, uh, very often the, the part that makes them the happiest, uh, maybe they got almost by a fluke or maybe they almost didn't get it or yeah. had turned it down originally or something. Did that happen with you and Higgins? Yeah, it gives me a chill when I think about it. I was up for a, a very large role in a new uh, feature film, a comedy, and uh, I we, my agent read the script, I read the script, and we both said this is going to be the hit of the season. And I wanted the part very badly. And Magnum had been offered to me. And had I gotten that part, I would have turned Magnum down. Uh, the film was one of the biggest flops of the season. Will you tell me? Yeah, it was First Family with Bob Newhart. Oh, yeah. And it was, you know, just nothing. And I look back on it and think, uh, Buck Henry was directing it, and Buck's a friend, and he, he was just on the fence. He couldn't decide whether he wanted to go with me or another actor who was a totally different type. And finally, he made his decision, and uh, we, you know, we, the Asian called and said, you've got to make a decision. John has this pilot for a television show. So Buck said, well, I think I'm going to go the other way. And I look back on that now, and I get a chill. <laughs> So I'm always amused when I hear actors talk about how they plan their careers. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at Tom, what's happened to him, yeah. because um, he uh, almost had Indiana Jones. That's right. Except that he had done Selleck, or uh, had done a, a, the pilot mm -hmm. for Magnum, and was committed to that. That's right. Yeah. But, and he was, uh, he was upset about that for a while, but his film career is going so well, it all worked out for the best anyway. I think it always does, don't you? I, that's my philosophy. When I look back on it and I, I, all of the ups and downs of my career, I, I would say that everything generally works out for the best. But I'm very happy to have Magnum. It's been wonderful. John, you did struggle for so many years. You were in mm. New York, a starving actor. Is that a true story that I've heard bandied about from time to time, that at one time you were so poor that you had to run an extension cord to your neighbor to get electricity? Mm -hmm. could, is that really true? That's absolutely true. I was very poor. I lived in a slum apartment on the Lower East Side for seven years. Not seven months, <laughs> seven years. The rent was $31 a month. There were many months I couldn't pay the rent. Fortunately, I had an understanding landlord. But it was a terrible struggle. It was uh, financially, I mean, it was not, it, though they were, ex it was exciting to be in New York in those years. I think New York is a place for when you're young and want to absorb things. And uh, I was a successful actor, too. I worked far more than most of my friends work. But it was just difficult financially. Uh, I don't regret any of that. I don't, uh, there's no bitterness in me about that. I, I, uh, I learned an awful lot about acting and about life. So uh, I don't look back on it with any great regret or bitterness. But I won't pretend that it was easy. It was difficult. And there was a lot of rejection and a lot of disappointment. But I think that's, that's the actor's lot in life. If you're going to be an actor, you might as well know going in that those are occupational hazards and to have an ego strong enough to survive all that. Otherwise, be something else because that's what it takes, I think, to, to survive it. Was there ever a time, John, when you thought you might go for something else? No. I was too stubborn to go. I, I wanted it, and I knew that I was good. I mean, I always felt that I had it, and it was just a question of convincing the world of that. It took 30 years, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, the world is kind of slow to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, aren't they? <laughs> 
John, we first met when you were working with Fort Worth Theater, mm -hmm. and uh, we even shared a dressing room together as we did a couple of roles. That's and true, people folks. can make what that. <laughs> make it, you can make of that what you will. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, of all the, the things that you did in Fort Worth with the theater, uh, was there any one role that just kind of said, okay, this is it for me? In the plays in Fort Worth? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, who's happy? Uh, the happy time where I played a grandfather was the first I've ever, I, you know, I was 24 and here I was playing an old man with a gray beard. It was quite an experience. I was probably terrible, but at the time I thought I was just terrific. <laughs> and I did, well, I did quite a few plays here and I enjoy all of them. And uh, by the time I left here, I think I had done about maybe 20 plays and I had quite a bit of ex stage experience. So when I went to New York, I enrolled in the American Theater Wing, but I was only there a year. I, I lost my accent there. I had a real good voice coach. But they weren't teaching me anything I didn't know, because I had gotten a very good grounding in acting here in the community theater. So after a year at the Wing, I went out and got in a summer stock group, and I haven't studied acting since. I'm not a, a student of acting. I'm not, I, I believe that uh, acting, I, at least for me, acting is intuitive. I don't, I don't have any complicated technique. Uh, but was it here in Fort Worth that you made that decision? Oh, yes. I made that decision. Uh, I, I, I was in the Air Force, stationed in Carswell, and I saw a notice in the paper that there was a tryout for a community theater play, Death of a Salesman, at the Old Majestic Theater downtown. And I had no thought of being an actor. I went to that to meet people, you know, off the base. And I read for, it was a small part, part of Bernard. I read for it, got the part, rehearsed it for a month, stepped on stage opening night. And it sounds corny, but a light went on. And I said, you, up to this moment, you've been bored all your life. And there was, from that moment on, the direction and purpose of my life was changed. It really happened that way, here in Fort Worth. <laughs> you heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> well, John, we could go on talking the rest of the evening. Yes. But um, anyway, what a thrill for me to sit well, here and a, talk with you. What a pleasure for me. And we must do it again soon. Let's do. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling. John, was there ever a time when you thought you'd just get out and do something else? No. I, I was too stubborn to get out. I was determined to be an actor. And I... I knew that I was good, you know. It was just a matter of convincing the world of that. It took 30 years. But <laughs> the world is slow to catch on. <laughs> yes, aren't they? <laughs> um. I'm rolling. Rolling? Do you know the answer? No, I don't. Okay. What happens if more than one person has the right answer? Well, then there'll be a play on. Okay, now let me do a couple of more. At what point did you decide, okay, this is it, I am going to be an actor? Now, was that a two shot? Top of my okay. again. <laughs> At what point in your life did you decide, okay, I'm going to be an actor? Well, it was the moment that I stepped on the stairs in the just theater. All right. Um, okay. Okay, I'm rolling. Are these the happiest? E are these the happiest years of your life? Yes, I would say that they are. Okay. All right, Jimmy. We can. Let